Hello everyone, this is Gail, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm not going to be making a project of any kind, but I've wondered how many of you have rubber stamps or texture sheets or even a button that you happen to really like, but when you press it into your polymer clay, it doesn't give you a good um, a good design, a good imprint that you, for the things that you want to do. And the bird, this bird is an example. I have this bird, and you see it's a bird sitting on a branch with a little flower, and it's really nice. But all the nice part is raised, which means when you push it into your clay, it's going to leave an indentation, and then you can't do much with it in clay. It looks good on a piece of paper, but um, like this. This is a um, Lisa Pavelka stamp. It is Love Letter, and it's this raised uh, script, which I, I absolutely love. But if you stamp it into clay, let me just give you an example. If you stamp it into clay, I'm not going to do a whole sheet. It goes in. And if you wanted to use this on a, um, on a design where you wanted it raised, so maybe you could put mica powder on it or something, you can't use it. wanted to show you what I meant by the texture stamp not the texture stamp the the lettering sometimes I'm not real clear I know what I want to say but I have a hard time getting it out but let me do this you can see if you go over this now you're going to have a gold sheet with the dark lettering. And that looks great. If that's the look that you want, that's, that's awesome. But sometimes you want the clay to stay dark and the lettering to be gold. And that's when you would bake this, <coughs> um, make it into a mold, then press your fresh clay on top of it, and then you'll come up with the uh, opposite of this. This is going to have the letters going in. Your impression will have the letters coming out. So, hope that helps. So I thought I would show you how to do that. Again, here's this button, and I like this button. It's a nice, nice flower shape with the circles around here. But again, when you press that into the clay, You can see that everything that's pretty is sunken into this clay instead of sitting on top so you could decorate it. So let me show you the difference. I will cut this is a this is just some scrap clay left over from the um, cross that I did the other day. And I'm just gonna cut a piece off of this. This is a double thickness of the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And hopefully I cut this big enough. I'm going to press this button into the clay. I'm just making sure it goes in all around. And then pull it off. You can see this better than on the other sheet. But see, everything is going in. But with the magic of polymer clay, 
you just trim this off a little bit. You can bake this and use it as a mold and you'll come up with the same impression as your button. Same thing with the um, with the script. I'm just going to do a small piece for the script. On this I would lay the clay on top of it and press. You can either press with your fingers or you can take your roller and press. Let's do it that way. And then when you pull it up, all the script is going in, which might look great. Maybe you want to put your mica powder on the top of this and leave the clay, the letters in the darker clay. Or you can bake this and you will come up with, I'm sorry, you can come up with an, another exact impression. But what I'm going to do here, and this is, like I said, this is just scrap clay. You can use scrap clay. This Sculpey Bacon Bend is good to make molds and things out of because it's a real soft, flexible clay, but then when it is cured, it cures flexible. But this is just souffle clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bird and I'm going to pick this up for a minute to make sure it goes in the right place. Let me just look around and make sure I can move this down a little bit more. And I'm going to put it on a tile. If I can find another one. What did I do with all my tiles? They're probably sitting here in my drawer. So this one I will not put it on a tile. But I'm going to press on this and make sure it goes all the way in and makes a really good impression and you might want to rock it just a little bit but just make sure one of the advantages of having it on the tile is I could turn it and let me see Okay, this turned out pretty good. See the impression that's on there? So what I would do is bake that. And for the sake of time, I've already baked one. This one has been baked. But just to show you how this works, this is a bird. And it's the same direction as the stamp. But the bird and everything is going in. So let me take a... I'll just use the same color. Since I've got that here. And it's already conditioned. Let me flatten it out. Now before I start, you need... There's a little piece of blue clay. I think it's baked in there. Uh, before you start, you need to like dust it with cornstarch or spray it with water. I kind of like the cornstarch. I never remember which one of these I'm supposed to unscrew. But this is my little cornstarch pouch. It's actually made for fondant making. And I'm going to just take a little brush and make sure it gets down in everything. But this will keep the clay from sticking. And then let me take, let me see, let me cut a piece the size of this 
block or close to the size of this block. As we know that'll be big enough because it's got the, the bird already on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down and make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies of this stamp. See, this is a little bit bigger. Trim that off a little bit just so I can get this edge really good. And then when I pull this off, I have the bird sitting up, which means then, let me take my brush again and brush off the cornstarch. But at this point, I can trim it off or I can wait. Let me get something. Let's see, what would look pretty on the purple? How about... Sunflower Sparkle. Now you can do these in different colors. I'm just going to show you one. These are my perfect pearls. But now I can take my perfect pearls and I can change colors. But I'm just going to do all of this in the gold. mainly because it shows up well on camera. And then if you want, you can take your your craft knife and if you want to cut each leaf. You can do that. So you can cut it out. Just cut out the other side of this leaf. You, you can, like I say, if you want to take, take your time and trim it the way you want it. You can cut this flower off if you want. And just cut out the leaves. And then cut out your bird. Just cut this off so you can see how it's going to look. You know, and you may have to go back in and just trim off little pieces that might be stuck in there. Let me come in so you can see what I'm doing. I can't move. Let me move this over a little bit.
But there, you can see what I'm doing. Let me take my knife. And let me just cut this off. Let see, you can cut it out. And you can either bake it this way. Or you could put it on another piece of clay. Like on a pretty piece of pearl or some black. Whoops, I cut off my leaf. Thank goodness it's polymer clay. But you can do the exact same thing with your button. Of course, this is not baked. Or with your script. And of course, this is not baked. But you could do the exact same thing. And then you'll end up with a button that looks exactly like this. Doesn't. There. But yet, you can, you can put one color of mica powder on the center because it's sitting up. You can put it on the circles around here because it's sitting up. And then, there, you know, you can do what you want with the petals. You could do the outline of the petals because it's sitting up. So there's just so much you can do if you have rubber stamps or, or like I said, a button. Anything that you've got that you like, but you, it doesn't work for you on the clay because the design goes in. You can always stamp it on a piece of clay, bake it, and then, <coughs> excuse me, once it's baked and cooled, then you can put a sheet of clay on here. You can even do a double layer of clay on here to make it really nice and thick if you want. There's just so many things you can do if you can make your own uh, tools. A lot of people don't have a lot of money for a lot of different things, but, you know, if you have, like I said, a rubber stamp, I've got a lot of rubber stamps that I had bought for polymer clay before I even started with my um, paper crafting. But this was one I was never able to use because it didn't give me the design that I wanted. I see I didn't go up on the tail very far, did I? There. And of course, after it's cut out, you can go back with your finger and add some more detail to it. But there you go. That is how you make your own mold or texture or whatever it is that you want. So I hope this will be helpful to you. Um, it's something that I do, uh, you know, not often, but there are times when there's something I have in one form and I want just the opposite. So all I do is I put it into my scrap clay or like I say, you can use this Sculpey Bacon Bend. It's very soft and very flexible. If it's something that, like this is going, let me take it up off of the See, this has got a little bit of flex to it, but not a whole lot. The bacon bend would bend a lot better than this. This is the souffle. So, um, you know, there's just so much you can do. So, just use your imagination. So, I hope you like this. This was more of a technique than, or a tip rather than a project, but I hope it's something that you're going to be able to use in the future. So, have a great day. Keep on claying. Bye-bye.